Hello everyone, it's Mike. You're catching me in an echoey staircase where we're doing a quick gorilla video on cultivating meaning in bodywork or how to make charting not suck. What do I mean by this? Well, as a bodyworker, the most challenging and the most rewarding part of my job is not figuring out what nerve is injured or what ligament is overstretched. The best part of my job and the hardest part of my job is locating in my patient the agency for healing. That is to say, finding out the shape of their life and figuring out how best I can be useful to them. Now, if you're like me, you've encountered many work environments in bodywork and a lot of cultures in bodywork that tend to de-emphasize the intake conversation. And I think that's a mistake. We need that initial conversation and an ongoing conversation through a session to cultivate meaning. And this dovetails with the evidence we now have around our therapeutic outcomes. We know that in interactive professions like ours, the most important agent in getting someone better is not the friction or the effleurage or the stretch we do, it is the therapeutic relationship. So anything you can do to foster a more potent and meaningful therapeutic relationship is going to help you get people better. So let's focus on that initial conversation and how you can use it to cultivate meaning throughout the treatment series with someone who needs to get better. Here's how I tend to think of it. At the initial part of the session, your main job is to let the person tell their story. And it goes a little bit like this. You ask what I call a grand tour question. So the grand tour question could be something very simple that gets them talking. Hello, how can I help you today? Or how's your body? Or how are the historical conquests of you? I tend to get a little grandiloquent, but you can make up your own grand tour questions, something that lets the person begin telling their story. And you can feel the need to tell a story. Your job is to listen and receive it with grace. So here you are listening to them and occasionally asking specifying questions. Questions like, how long ago was that surgery? What medications are you on? How are you limited in your activity? Stuff like that, specifying questions. But then once you get the information, you go right back to listening and letting them tell their story. Then comes a moment, and you can feel it if you're paying attention, where the back pressure on the story falls away. It's like the fire hose stops pushing. That's what I call story saturation. There's an exhale, and there's a, a sense that the person has told to you the story they, they had loaded up to tell you. Now, many people in physical medicine and body work tend to go straight into treatment from there or straight into assessment from there. So they basically say, okay, we got the information, now let's get you on the table or now let's have a look at you. I think that's a mistake because there's another piece of the conversation that needs to happen once the story has been told. And that is a story about the future. What they've told you is what brought them in today and what has happened to them. And most folks will not have told you much about what the future looks like. What is it that's going to draw them forward once the thing they are coming in for has stopped being so bad? That's where we want to talk about the meaningful activity or the meaningful experience. Okay, so someone has finished telling you their story and, uh, and there's this kind of exhale and you have all the details down about their past, about the etiology, etc. And then you say something like, okay, I think I get where you're coming from. Tell me what better looks like. Tell me about the day or the week in your life where this is better. It's not perfect, but you look around and you're like, you know, this is better. What does that day look like? What are you able to do in that day or that week that you can't do now? What is your experience of life when this is better? You can ask this many different ways, and there are plenty of sources you can look up for helping you ask this question, but that's a potent question to ask. Now, people may not have an immediate answer for you. They might say, uh, I don't know. Um, that's fine. That's fine. 
Come back to the question later if you want, or help them out. Um, give them more backing, but ask the question, what is it that's meaningful to you that would be different if we were successful in this treatment? And when they give you an answer, it will usually contain a lot of meaning for them. It will have emotional valence, and it might surprise you. The person might say, you know, better for me would be the ability to play Xbox for six hours straight. Now, that's not my definition of health, but it's a definition of health which is centered on the patient, and that's what's important. That is what will power the healing to come, right? So, ask about a meaningful experience or a meaningful activity that pertains to them, that is worth it to them, because you're asking them to invest energy in the therapeutic relationship. You need to find a source of energy in them. And there's a benefit to this. Once you have identified at least one meaningful experience or meaningful activity, you can leverage that and reference that in all kinds of other domains of your therapeutic relationship. You can take that meaningful activity and you can deploy it into assessment. That's to say you're no longer just assessing for a random range of motion or a random strength or something like that. You are assessing something meaningful to them. You're saying, show me that Xbox positioning and let's see if we can find a better way for you to inhabit that space. So all of a sudden, assessment becomes more relevant, becomes more fun. It becomes, it feels less like a waste of time. Um, the person is usually much more willing to participate in meaningful assessment if it pertains to their value system, right? Likewise, it gives you a basis for asking meaningful feedback throughout the course of the session. No longer are you saying, well, just tell me if you feel something. You're saying, does this pertain to that thing you care about? Are we having an effect on the thing you care about? So all of a sudden, it, you're not pulling teeth when you're soliciting feedback. You're feeding back onto the meaningful ground that you built beforehand. It lets you find a motivational substrate for self-care activities. No longer are you merely recommending to them a certain rehab motion or a certain self-care activity or certain self-inquiry. You're saying, if you want to bring about that future that is better, here is the path. Here's something you can do. You can change your life in this way. Invest that energy. But where's that energy coming from? It's coming from the meaning pertinent to them, right? And then finally, having a meaningful activity um, powers the communication that you have with the rest of the healthcare team. Your fellow massage therapist, physical therapist, acupuncturist, physician, whomever, you can use that as the linchpin of your communications with the rest of the team, with your charting. Um, you can say, and I will oftentimes abbreviate, MA, meaningful activity, colon, bowling, right? I will say some context of their life that is meaningful, and then I can communicate that to the rest of the healthcare team. All of a sudden, it's not just my therapeutic relationship that is galvanized, that is electrified, powered by this meaningful activity. It is the whole healthcare team oriented around a patient-centered version of health. Having established that, you can continue to circle back to it and see if we've gotten there. So it lets you get paid if you're billing for insurance. It lets you continue to check back in on if you're being useful. And that means less burnout, less dissipation of your therapeutic relationship over time. So allow yourself to focus on meaningful activities and I think you will have a very powerful uh, way of, uh, of working as body workers. Thanks so much for your time.